I will show you now how to create easy and real-time candle flames in Blender, so let's jump right in. Hey everyone, welcome to my new tutorial. Today I want to show you how to create these real-time candle flames in Blender and in Eevee. And I will use one of my recent scenes to do this. And you can get that on Patreon, but you can just follow along without the scene whatsoever. And I really hope you will enjoy this one. And if you do, please don't forget to leave that like. And if you're new around here, hit that subscribe. Let's now jump in Blender. And I have these candles around here and I want to have nice and stylized candle flame here. And fire simulation can be quite overwhelming. So I have a different method for this. So let me just hold shift and right click here so I can place the cursor on the candle. And now let's press shift A and I'll create a plane. And now first thing I want to do is create a texture for the flame. And now we can switch to the texture paint here and hit slash on an numpad to isolate this. And now you can see this is purple because we don't have any texture there. So let's just create a new texture slot right here, hit plus and just use base color for now. And we can do something like 2K, but I think 1K should be enough for a small flame as well. And now just click color and let's go all the way to the black color and let's hit add. And now we have this black texture right here and we are able to paint over this. And now with the latest versions of Blender, you can see there's this brush shell. So it's very easy to pick a different brush. And I'm interested into this paint soft brush right here. So let's just select it. And now if you hit seven on an ampad and look from the top, you could easily just start painting something like a flame here, but I don't think that would yield a good result. So instead, let's do a little trick here. First of all, we'll need to tilt our viewport in orthographic view. And if you use two or eight on your numpad, they'll basically help you to move your camera around while still in orthographic. If you hit five, you will go into perspective as you can see, but if you hit five again, you will be back in orthographic and you can just tilt this. So let's use two to tilt this away from us, something like this. And now we can press F and make this brush larger and let's just pick a white color, but let's do some very soft strength, something like this. And let's just paint in something. And you can immediately see the result here on the left side because we have this tilted and you can make this even stronger if you press 2 once again just make sure the brush will cover this you can add you know a little bit more definition there but i think the view was just okay and now we can increase the strength and press f and reduce the fall off zoom out a little bit and we can hit a few more brush strokes right here down at the end and now let's increase the strength a little bit more. Let's click here. You can see how the flame texture nicely comes together. And now we can press F again and make this even smaller and increase the strength even more. And let's tilt this maybe slightly. And now with the full strength, let's fill this in. So this is what you will get. And as you can see with few easy tricks like tilting the plane you can get quite nice results and now we'll just need to save our texture um you don't need to save this externally just click the image here and choose pack and it will stay within your blender file um, but let's just rename it to flame okay let's hit ctrl s to save the file and now we can go back to the layout view and here you will see the texture added to your plane. If you just started Blender and you have trouble following all the tutorials, make sure to check out my courses as well, where in addition to the step-by-step -step instructions, you also get full in-depth explanation of all the tools and all the steps, and you get to learn everything from simple open design all the way to full character illustration, textured environment, even a little bit of sculpting and hard surface modeling, and with the latest one, even detailed car modeling and animation. So if you're interested, please check out the link in the description. So now let's tab into the edit mode. And I want to move the origin point right here. And since I didn't resize the plane, I can just hit G then Y and press one to move this one meter. And it will place this exactly on the origin point. And now let's look from the top by pressing seven on an ampad because I think there's some unnecessary geometry around here. So let's press control R and place the cut right here and right click to release it in place. And now press control B to bevel. And let's just trim it a little bit like this. I think that will be more than enough and now we can press 3 for face select and just select and delete those faces by pressing x and now hit ctrl r create one cut here right click to release and now press a and right click and subdivide this and let's press shift r to do this multiple times so we have some denser geometry here um, i think we can go 
even more something like this we'll see how this works in the end and now let's step out and let's press r then x and let's enter 90 to rotate 90 degrees let's confirm and now let's drag out the new window here and let's choose shader editor and here we'll just plug this into the alpha you can see this will start to work right away we can unplug the color and let's press shift a and let's add converter and color ramp plug this right here and finally in the color of the emission and here we can choose whatever color we want but additionally we can increase strength and you can see this will really start to work and we can also preview this in cycles and see how much emission we'll actually need so this is how it will look like now let's make some additional adjustments i will tap into the edit mode here and press g then z and just move this down so it's closer to where the flame should be and then maybe adjust it on the x-axis right here let's tap out and additionally i will scale this down in the object mode just like this and press ctrl a and apply the scale and additionally ctrl a and apply the rotation so the z is up and now finally we can play with some colors so here in the color ramp we can change the black color for example to something different like a little bit of orange then here on the white we can go something brighter or you can get really creative and start playing with the colors of the flame it's totally up to you basically and now we can do some in-between color like this a little bit more yellow and i really like how this looks so that's the basics of the flame and now if we look in the ev this still works um, if you see some dithering don't worry about it it's about the sampling and finally let's give this a little bit different shape so we can tap into the edit mode press one for vertex select select these vertices on the other side and now let's enable proportional editing press s then x and we can increase or decrease the follow with the mouse wheel and just start moving them together and you will see how the whole thing kind of moves together like this and it will give us a little bit more you know natural shape of the flame and you can for example push these a little bit apart here and refine the shape however you want and now the most important part let's give it a little bit of movement and we can just use displacement for this so let's go to the modifiers let's add modifier and we'll use the form and displacement and you can see it will shift a little bit here um, but don't worry about that um, let's switch this to solid view so we better see what's happening and you can additionally enable wireframe overlay and now let's add new texture here let's edit that texture and let's switch this to something like distorted noise and now we can play with the size of course and the amount of distortion so we get something like this but now as you can see the whole thing is moving so we kind of need to anchor the bottom of the flame which is very easy using the weight paints so let's go to the object properties and let's create a new vertex group and now let's go to the modifiers let's disable the displacement modifier for a second let's look from the front by pressing one on an ampad let's zoom in a little bit and now we'll switch to weight paint mode and let's just use the gradient here and we can just start dragging the gradient from the top of the flame to somewhere here and now let's enable the displacement again and you will see this is still deformed but if you choose your vertex group you will see now the bottom is anchored and now if you go into the texture settings and play with this you will see the bottom will stay where it's needed and you can play with the amount of distortion but additionally you can go back to the displacement and play with the strength of the displacement so i'm looking for something like this and now another thing you can use different coordinates so for example let's use an empty so let's go out of the weight paint mode let's hold shift s reset cursor to world origin and let's press shift a and i'll add an empty plane axis and then i'll press shift d then x and duplicate this because i want this to loop um, otherwise it wouldn't matter that much so now i'll use this empty for the coordinates so let's select our flame and in the displacement modifier let's switch coordinates to object and let's pick our empty so now if you move the empty 
you will see the flame moves as well. So now let's hold shift, select the empty in the middle. I will press Ctrl P and parent to object. And now let's select the one in the middle. I'll press N for the side panel and insert the keyframe for the rotation. But let's make sure we are on the frame one. Let's right click insert single keyframe. And then on the frame 91, we'll set this to 360, right click and insert single keyframe. And then press A in the timeline here and press T and linear because we want this to be continuous. And now if you play it back, you can see this is now circling around and we have a working flame. This is quite hectic, but you can adjust this, um, for example, with the size of the texture. So we can go back to the texture settings. Let me just go here and disable the wireframe overlay. And of course, we can right click shade this smooth and let's play with the size. Let's make it larger. OK, something like this. And if this is still too fast, you can just make the animation longer and then select the central empty and select this keyframe and just drag it out here. So it will be a little bit slower. So now if you preview this in material preview or in cycles for the matter, you will get something like this. Additionally, you can add another layer of animation to this. Let's go to the frame one and we can right click and insert single keyframe on the Z scale. And then we can hit control tab here in the timeline. You will find the Z scale track right here. And here in the modifiers, if you don't see it, just press N for the side panel and let's add the noise. And of course, we'll need to adjust the scale. So make this larger. And let's preview this in the solid view so we see what's happening there. Now you will see it will kind of go up and down. And of course, if you make the scale smaller, it will be more hectic. So you can match the kind of energy of the flame as this animation goes around. You can match it with this noise modifier. Just don't go too crazy. And of course, you can adjust the strength. But again, like make just subtle adjustments. And then if you preview this in the animation, it looks like this. And from afar, when you need to render this out in, for example, like a diorama or some isometric scene or something that's not a close up shot, uh, this perfectly works even with a little bit more realistic renders, basically. And the best thing is if you select the flame and just duplicate it somewhere, since the mapping is with the object and in relation to the position of the flame, the object is every time somewhere else. It will basically give different deformation to the flames based on their position. So that's it for the quick flame tutorial today. And I really hope you enjoyed this one. And if you did, please again, leave the like. And if you want to learn more like this, hit that subscribe. Thank you all for watching and have a wonderful day. Mm -hmm.